One uh, uh, final presentation now from uh, Julia Wisby, who is a senior leader at Admiral Lord Nelson School in Portsmouth. And uh, Julia's going to talk about some of the work that they've been doing. Thank you, Julia. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? Um, so I thought I'd put us in, in context uh, first. We're a relatively new school, um, founded in 1995, and we've recently expanded. So we expanded this year. Um, Portsmouth is a, is a fascinating place to work. I've worked at LNS for 20 years now. Um, and the arts in our city are absolutely thriving, well, were absolutely thriving um, before lockdown. But we also have one of the highest rates of youth poverty in the country. Um, and so although there's a lot for adults and a lot for visitors within the city, there's not necessarily a lot for young people. And where our school is located um, means that we're at the north end of the city, which is just an urbanized area. So the access for our young people is really limited. So as a school, um, I decided when I came here 20 years ago that if I can't get my young people out to see things and to experience the arts, I need to bring them into school. Um, and I need to provide a professional experience for, for my young people at every single opportunity. And that's what our school has been committed to for, for a really long time. Um, next slide, please. So as I said, um, we've always been committed to, to lots and lots of high quality arts experience. And we're very, very fortunate as a Portsmouth school um, to have been recognized at a national level for some of this. Um, last year, we, were, we won Creative School of the Year at the TESS Awards, which is a pretty monumental achievement for a Portsmouth school. Um, but one of the things that we're even more proud of is that right from the very beginning with the Arts Council, uh, we were been part of ArtsMark. Um, we were a gold school right from the very first year. Um, and we're now a triple platinum ArtsMark school being the first one in the UK to, to be awarded the platinum award three times. Um, there are schools that do more than us. There are schools that do things differently to us, um, but being a, Portsmouth School with some of the battles that we have with some of our young people, with their background, with how things are within our city, it is a, it is a really huge thing for a Portsmouth School and it kind of defines us and it's the thing that saved us um, and saved our young people and we'll get to that during lockdown and with the way that, that things are now, hanging on to that absolutely creative curriculum that covers as much breadth um, as possible. Next slide, please. So it's important for us to explain why, why we do this. I think I'm probably absolutely talking to the converted who already know why we do this. Um, but we are in a situation now where we're people are peddling against, especially at secondary, um, this, this horrible catch-up curriculum, this horrible, we've got year 11s running at exams and, and trying to do things as fast as possible. And we're not doing that. Um, we're absolutely talking about how we feel and the moments that we can feel um, and how incredibly important it is for that creativity in our young people to be at the, the forefront of everything that we're doing because creativity is problem solving um, and that's what we're all doing as educators at the moment trying to solve every single problem that's that's thrown our way um, so we talk to our young people about music as a language um, escaping into a different world within the theater and actually we've been right through lockdown and now celebrating the things that we got to do that we wouldn't have got to do otherwise. So we have all seen a range of theatre that there's there's no way I would have seen a show a week um, if life had carried on as normal. There's no way that our young people will have been able to tour art galleries or listen to music, um, as well as explore our own creativity in the way that we were thinking and planning um, and having to adapt to teaching performance and music and dance and art online was so different to the way that maths and English and science teachers could do it. Um, and we 
wanted to find ways to be able to do that and to be able to do it differently to everybody else. We've always been a really solution focused school. Um, it's how we work as SLT. I'm either lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, to be part of the senior leadership team um, and to, to be able to say, well, that's an issue. How do we solve it? And that's creative thinking all of the time. How do we solve those things? How do we come up with something that's different? Because all of our Zoom, all of our live lessons that we were doing, the children could see us, but we couldn't see the children. Um, we weren't allowed to do that because of the huge number of safeguarding issues that we can have within our school some of the time. So we decided that was going to be our school policy. Well, how do you teach a drama lesson if they can only see you and you can't see what they're doing? So we had to come up with some pretty creative solutions um, to be able to do those things. Um, so can I have the next slide, please? So we really talked as a staff and to our young people about mental health, um, that our mental health is like our physical health, that it isn't about being happy. It isn't about waiting until you have a mental health problem or a mental health issue. Mental health is something we all have all of the time. Um, and it isn't about feeling happy all of the time. It is about knowing how to be resilient, finding creative strategies to engage our minds um, and to be able to do that with our young people. We were in great danger, especially secondary schools, of bombarding our young people with work to sit at a computer and do. I have a, a seven-year-old boy um, and so much of his work sent from his primary school was sit here and do this online task. Well, that's not what they wanted to do. Um, we needed activity days, we needed things to do. So I kind of rebelled against what he was doing um, and I needed to provide a forum for our young people to be able to explore their creativity and to be able to do things um, in, a, in, a, in a different way other than this is your math, this is your science, which also has you know, a tremendous value to it, but we needed to be, th be able to think differently. And as a as a nation, I think we did that. We walked along the street playing Spot the Rainbow. We saw um, a, a dance routines that kids were doing on TikTok, whatever you may think of that. And um, we made things and we did things and we became incredibly creative as a nation. And it's really, really important that we hang on to that now that we're back in school. Can I have the next slide, please? So what, what did we do? Um, well, to start with, we embraced the opportunity, or I embraced the opportunity to actually finish our application for Artsmark. We had time to really review where we had come from, but more importantly, how we were gonna move forward in our next cycle, because we've always worked cyclically with it. Um, where were we gonna go when we couldn't go to a theater, when we can't do a school play, when we can't sing? in the same room. Um, where were we going to move to with that? And I'll, I'll come to that later, but we had the opportunity to be able to discuss that, however bizarrely via Zoom. Um, but the arts became really key in our distance learning. We agreed really early on that we would not lose those lessons like lots of other schools did, sadly, that we would hang on to them. Um, we would set them and we would be ambassadors for, for doing that. So can I have the next slide, please? So our key worker school for our vulnerable students um, at its peak contained over 100 students. Um, and we delivered lessons of drama, music, dance and art every single day. Uh, so in the morning they had sessions where they were doing their online learning with a computer and then an active creative lesson in the afternoon. So all of my team were in pretty much most of the time during lockdown, running sessions in key worker school, which were really challenging to be able to prepare for, but actually engage some children who were not convinced by it at the beginning, um, that actually they could be really creative in, in what, what they were doing. We were setting on normal lessons. Um, it was part of their standard diet. We became really active um, with, recording podcasts and writing blogs with the TES about creativity in schools and its value and its importance. 
Um, and actually going back to the basics of what creative thinking was, that it was about problem solving, we jumped on the bandwagon um, of releasing productions and keeping theatre uh, going. So we went back through our tremendous back catalogue of school productions and um, went on YouTube, created a channel, released one every two weeks, probably uh, not quite in copyright law, but we managed uh, to do it with private invitations to parents, um, which had an amazing then social media eruption of ex-students finding themselves on there and absolutely loving it. We went virtual with lots of videos for, for parents. I've put a link to our school website so you can actually see um, what we were doing. But the most important thing was the second we were back in school, um, we went practical from the moment we opened. We were absolutely determined, despite the bizarre government guidelines that we have for how we can deliver our practical lessons to get practical work back up and running because we weren't ready um, for the, the knock in confidence that our students had experienced in terms of getting up and performing in front of each other. They are 80% of the time in lessons where they are having to adhere to certain rules about facing front and not turning around and, and not moving out of their seat that actually when they come into a, a drama and a music and a dance environment that perceived freedom makes them a, a, a little bit uncomfortable. Um, we thought they'd kind of go a little bit crazy and get very excited by being back in the studios but it's actually made them really nervous which is not something we've experienced with our, our young people before. So um, we've had to do a little bit of, of building of confidence, of, of slight adaptions to our schemes of learning and really looking at the, the difference in what we deliver virtually to those that are isolating um, and within the classroom. Um, so next slide, please. So we had some real challenges. Okay, so we had to look at the value of what we were doing and how we were going to sustain it. Um, because I think for most schools, it was really exciting at first to make your pets talk on video and do all kinds of bizarre things in lessons. But actually keeping that going um, has been a, a challenge where we're still setting those lessons and we're still doing those things. Um, but we are, we are still going. And like Dave said in the previous one, um, it is staff fatigue now. I think people are exhausted. Our young people are exhausted. Um, but we are determined. We made a commitment to our young people to deliver a normal a curriculum as possible, to be absolutely creative, to listen to them, um, which is just fundamental to what I do as, as leading performance and leading um, our personal development of our young people. So we're listening to what they want. Um, if you could skip to my very last slide, because I think I made far too many. Uh, next one, next one. This is the one, oh, no, back one, sorry. I want to, to leave you with some of the, the impact, what difference we're making, what difference you're making in your school. And I'll just leave that there while I talk, which is some of the feedback that we've had from some of our students about being set drama and dance and music work throughout lockdown and how they feel about being back in school. Um, with students saying that they'd watch things they never thought they would watch, that they made videos with their family. We had one piece of work where they had to fit their favourite film into one minute and use all of their family um, within their uh, year seven saying that they love lessons and that they're making new friends and doing things they've never done before. Um, some sad comments about those that are missing the interactions because we can't get our school play up and running and, and missing the interactions with the other year groups, which is exactly like Dave said. And my favourite quote at the bottom that I'll leave you with, which is about being an arts mark school um, and how proud our students are to, to be part of that. The, the difference that it makes that it means that you get to celebrate what you do. I can't, I can't tell you how that important um, that is as a, as a school to find a way to celebrate everything um, that you do within your, your school and it offers just this amazing way to be able to do that. We are all getting there. We are all hanging on um, and, and doing the absolute best for our young people because that's at the absolute core of, of what we do. So thank you for listening.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia, for um, sharing that wonderful work. It's just so rich and varied. And what, what came through to me is what's at the centre of it is, you know, listening to what young people have to say and listening to what they need and want and actually crafting the work that you do around that to make it so uh, relevant to them. So thank you very much indeed. Um, now we're, we're running quite short of time and we're now into our um, Q&A session. I don't know if um, anybody has got any questions that they want to put into the chat, whether it might be reflection, further reflection on those uh, questions that Alison set at the beginning, um, or any questions that you'd like to direct to any member of the panel. Um, if you want to take a, a moment to think about that. Um, just while you're doing that, I, I just want to say that um, Alison talked right at the beginning about the importance of connection and deciding what really matters. And we've just heard so many excellent examples of both, arts and, of both the arts and cultural sector and schools uh, really making this a focus. And um, I do hope that it's inspired those of you who, who've listened, who've attended, um, and that you've found something to take away. Um, including those wonderful reflective questions that um, Alison set because uh, you know there's there's so much there to to unpick and discuss and and to probably contextualize in in individual contexts um, so. can I just can I just say Lorraine um, watching all those presentations there was so much energy that, that mm -hmm. came through every single person who presented presented with a passion for what they were doing, talking about the children and young people they'd been working with, that kind of um, irresistible energy, which is what makes a brilliant teacher. And it was just so lovely to hear all those stories. So I just want to say congratulations to all of you because I was, every single one I was like, oh, this is amazing. Oh no, this one's amazing as well. Yeah. And it's that that makes our schools, you know, come to life. It really does. It's fantastic to hear. Yeah, and it's so uplifting. It's so uplifting to hear and to actually be able to share that work. So thank you. Um, did anybody have, we've just got lovely comments in the chat about all of the contribute, <laughs> all of the presentations. Um, but I don't know if anybody does have a question or anything they want to raise. No problem if not. Real food for thought and to feedback to SLT and arts teachers. Oh, here's a question. Could I please ask Julia and Dave, as a school, how do you inspire all your staff to be actively involved and supportive of the importance of the arts? So that's Julia. I am, I'm relentless with, um, with my staff. Um, I don't know whether I've just worn them down over the years. Um, it's constant in enthusiasm, but it's also, um, as soon as you can demonstrate what it does for young people, um, the impact that it has broader across the curriculum with their confidence, with their ability to remain engaged, um, I don't think staff can question it once you've actually shown, you know, a disengaged student get up in a school play or sing a song who wouldn't do something before. There's no argument with that. There's, there's no comeback to that of, of how it doesn't have a value. And now, especially because I just go, go back with a, there's not a single person who didn't watch Netflix or be part of that community or watch a show or do something. So therefore, its value at the moment is absolutely intrinsic to everybody's mental health and well-being. Thank you, Julia. Dave, do you have anything to say? Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, relentless is definitely the, the, the term, dog with a bone. Um, and also, I can hear where the question has come from because... It, it isn't easy. I mean, I find that even now, even as head, because I love it. I've still got some teachers that I know um, find it harder to, to see the value of it. So I think it's going back to that change cycle. And as a leader, I always sort of, you know, I know the people that are going to be influential, that are going to show the impact of what the art, drama in particular, when you come to do something like writing, can can have. And then I'm just starting to um, introduce things like, um, you know, to, to teachers and say, why do you always have to give them a picture? Can't they just draw that? Can't they just have the opportunity just to draw that picture themselves? Why do you have to give them a picture of a castle? And they sort of say, yeah, yeah, they could do. So it's just chipping away, but choosing those people that are very influential and sort of change managers. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just picking up a couple of other questions. Um, 
this one is from James Whittle. Um, and maybe Alison, you might be able to respond to this. Um, how do we manage increasing exhaustion levels, both students and staff, and support our communities? What is needed? How can outside arts organisations, freelancers help? I thought perhaps also that uh, Tristan, Kath, and um, Naya might have something to say too. Uh, well, in terms of the exhaustion levels, um, I just think we have to be kind to ourselves and kind to everybody around us. So this is not the time to be excellent in terms of marking and displays and all the other things that we normally uh, think are important. It's it's about, as I've said, all of the well-being and connecting. Um, but other colleagues would probably be very well placed to respond as, as to how freelancers might be able to support in addition to that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Ania, yeah. So, um, obviously, all your areas will have a local music hub, and, and part of part of what music hubs do is we we work in partnership with arts organisations in our areas and our regions, and our our focus is to connect arts professionals with with our schools with the educate you know bridge that gap between education and and the arts industry um so certainly your local music hub i'm sure will you know we've certainly got a lot of free online content and also we can you know bespoke things specifically for your school so get in get in touch with us talk to us and tell us what it is that you want and we can design projects around that very easily Kath. Thank I you. would add to, add to that and just say your local CEP as well, your cultural education partnership will be able to do the same thing um, and that they, they are really there to support the work that you're doing and there's fantastic links with, with some areas. Um, I would say the exhaustion thing works both ways as well so don't forget that everybody else is dealing with that same exhaustion of being online and it really is in it together and, and what can we do to be creative and, and, and as, as some of you have rightly said what is it that we can do and do well but not necessarily focusing on, on what it is that we can't do you know, the, but use those contacts use your cp use your hubs and and see what they can do to help you thank you thanks very much kath tristan well i'll just quickly come in and echo that we're part of our cultural educational partnership and that is such a great network for connecting with schools i am married to a teacher so i understand the exhaustion i have so much respect for all of you for even finding the time to be here for two hours absolutely so what i would say is organizations like mine desperately want to work with you um, and we'll often find it's about finding a route in so through a partnership like that i might find one great um inspiring teacher and i know uh, Kirsten Black's on this call, who I just saw commenting. She's one of those people who really get what you're doing. And that's your way in as an organisation. I mean, all the work we do is is funded by grant funding, so we can design it with schools, take it to schools, and it's just about carving out the space and time to make it all happen and finding people who, who kind of share our values and have similar aims. So, yeah, please reach out to arts organisations as much as anything those who are proactive and are working online or blending COVID secure face-to-face -face stuff, they really want to disseminate work to freelance artists at the moment. They want to fund projects that can happen now, as do the Arts Council. So please reach out if you've got an idea that you want to make come to life, because organisations like mine have vast networks of freelance artists they work with, and we can often kind of set you up. Thank you so much, Tristan. And we've had a, the Cultural Education Partnerships mentioned a num number of times by a number of people. Um, if you're in a situation where you're not sure who your local Cultural Education Partnership is, please make contact with your Education Development Manager, um, Jane, Eleanor, Leanne, or myself, and we can connect you up with um, the Cultural Education Partnership and, and through that, through a wide range of arts and cultural organisations in your area um, who, who can support you. Alison, I wonder if you had one or two words just to sum up before we finish. Um, just to say, it's been wonderful this afternoon. I, I myself have been really uplifted by all of the stories. Mm. Uh, if, if it does it for us, it does it for the children, doesn't it? So let's just uh, remember that. And I know people are tired, we really are. <laughs> but um, when we do something that um, makes our hearts sing, as I've talked about before, that makes it all worthwhile, you know, and the children are in the same position. So, I love, the, love to hear about new projects that are coming on stream, things that people are doing because they've, they've learned that by listening to their youngsters, these are the things that are really impacting on them and making a difference. And there's something about pace, you know, we, we're used to having to do everything all at once. We don't have to. We just need to do what we need to do in order to keep everybody safe 
And if we can smile while we're doing that as well, all the better. But thank you very much for this afternoon. It's been lovely to join you all and well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. Thank you to all of our speakers and to all of uh, teachers who've given up. You've obviously been teaching all day and you've given up an extra two hours to join us. Thank you for your thinking and sharing your thinking with us. Um, we have put into the chat um, a feedback form, which we hope you will have a look at and give us some feedback around this. As I said at the beginning, this is one of five events that we're going to be hosting um, over the next five terms. We have another um, uh, event planned for January, later in January, and that will be around the theme of transition. And in the summer term, we have a, a, an event planned around arts rich schools and what they look like so uh, we do hope that you'll come along and join us for those and we hope to see maybe some of our current speakers again in the future but thank you very much indeed for your participation it's been wonderful really inspiring thank you bye <laughs>